20. Wait. Let me explain. Moments. According to Reddit. Number 20. When I was 17, my phone stopped receiving text messages for no obvious reason. I went online and told my boyfriend I wasn't able to receive his messages. I told my older sister, who said I could give her my SIM card, and then she would see if it worked on her phone. Sounds like a bad idea, but hey, if she's interested in helping. So I gave her my SIM card, and she said that the texts were coming through, and that she would forward them to me from her phone to mine. I can't remember exactly why she needed to do this, as it was years ago, but anyway. Then she said, um, this text will look weird when it comes through from me, but just remember it's not from me, it's from your boyfriend. So I got my SIM card back, went on my phone, which was now working, and read the text message which had come from my sister, but was originally from my boyfriend. It said, I will take it off for you, baby, winky face. Ugh. I went on to my text to see what that had been in reply to, as I hadn't remembered texting anything sexual to him beforehand, and I was mortified. Turned out, I had texted him to say that I couldn't shower because there was a huge wasp on my butt. No, on my bottle of shampoo and jokingly asked him to come over for nearly two hours to take it off for me. So his response was him joking that he would, but my sister obviously didn't think it was innocent. And as a 29 year old who still treated me like a child, she was very awkward about it. <laughs> oh, God forbid. God figgledy fimbrel for biggle. Okay. Um, shout out to Linda and back Hoa. What the hell? <laughs> In the stream chat. Giggledy goddamn. What it do, mom and true silver wolf. Holla, number 19. <laughs> In the beginning months of a relationship, I was staying over at my girlfriend's apartment. We were in bed, and the only light in the room came from a bright lamp on the end of the table, on her side of the bed. Now, in addition to being a bit sensitive to bright light, I have a lazy eye that makes it hard to focus on things that are really close. Things like my girlfriend at that particular moment. So, naturally, I asked, could you turn off that light? And you're really hard to look at. Oh my God. Okay. Oh my God. I don't know which of us had the bigger look of horror on our faces. If you could have seen the look on our faces. Number 18. I got super high and drunk one night with my best friend and his girlfriend. They stayed at my house and my friend is a loud snorer so his girlfriend ended up sleeping on my couch. My best friend in my guest room upstairs. It's 4am, I woke up still pretty drunk and high. For some reason I felt the need to check social media but couldn't find my phone. Drunk and high, I decide to go downstairs to look for my phone. Without realizing his girlfriend was on the couch, I reach down by a pillow to check for my phone. She wakes up and I'm left there having to explain at 4am why I'm grabbing her face. Slap it on some toes. Well damn fire monster. <laughs> I was beginning to forget what a subscription tastes like. I'm kidding. Yesterday we, uh, we got some. I love you though. I appreciate this and I appreciate you. Hope nobody grabs your face at 4am in the morning. Well done Kyle. Let's go. I don't think she believed my story to this day, and I looked like a rapist. My phone was in my pocket the whole time. As we continue to number 17. When my daughter was around three years old, she casually told my wife, Daddy likes to come into my room naked and play with me. What? It took a minute to realize that what she was talking about. A few weeks prior to that, she had woken up screaming, bad dream, 
and I jump out of bed wearing nothing but boxer briefs to see what the problem was. To get her to stop crying, I tried to make her laugh. Luckily for me, my wife believed me. Okay, yeah, you need to find yourself a wife that understands you ain't into that little little kid bing bong, all right? Jeez. What do I look like over here? Catholic priest. Number 16. I was practicing anatomy for drawing, of course. So, I had to look up naked models and stuff. It's for class, I promise. No big deal. Just to get the human form down, you know? It's nothing too weird. I gotta get done sketching for the day. Away. <laughs> so sorry. I get done sketching for the day and, you know, I go to bed. Over the weekend, I was animating and my dad walked in my room to ask me something. And then he goes, what the hell? And picks up a drawing. I was like, what? And he sees these drawings. I legit said the line, wait, I can explain. And he walked away laughing. I like the idea that you have a kid that, that draws, you know, that is an artist. Are you all right over there, Dia? I'm sorry. I just don't feel like you're conscious of whatever creaking noises the bed was making. Unless you were loving the noise and were like, hell yeah. Oh, Prelude gifted the uh, the sub as usual. This guy's up to 23 gifted subs on this channel. You know, Prelude may have robbed a bank. And, uh, and I appreciate him passing the savings on to me. Do you save when you rob a bank? Well, I guess you save yourself the, uh, the, the trouble of living like some kind of poor guy. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Listen. I like the idea that a father has a child that wants to be an artist and like he thinks that I guess he wasn't going to end up drawing the human form like that's not like a staple of people who who put pen to paper or, or slap it on some toes. Oh god damn did Prelude gift that one to you? Looks like he motherfucking did. Prelude, pretty sure you're gonna you're gonna own me the way Disney owns everything soon. Cause this is getting a little insane, Prelude. My God, my God. Thank you, Prelude, and by extension, Linda, for this hot fire subscription in the heat of the night. As we continue up the list of 20 weight, let me explain moments. Number 15, oh my God. About five and a half years ago, I dated a guy for like two months. While I was dating him, I was in the process of house hunting. I'd mentioned that the neighborhood that he was living in particularly was one that I had been hoping to buy. Our relationship fizzled out and we mutually split. Fast forward a couple of months and the house was on the market across the street and a couple down from his. I hated the awkward fact that it was so close to his, but I loved the house itself and like I said, I really wanted to buy in that neighborhood and had been having crap luck. So, I did what is normally recommended to anyone to do when looking at a new home. I visited in the evening to check out the noise activity levels, and at no point did I contact the guy because we hadn't dated that long, and I didn't even know if I'd ultimately end up living there. So, I was parked at the house I liked when my ex suddenly walked out of his house, taking his roommate's dog for a walk. I freaked, realized how bad it might look, like maybe I was stalking him or something, and I wasn't sure if he'd seen my car or me, so I froze as I wondered whether or not to do something and just hope he didn't see or try to explain myself. I opted for the latter. I rolled down my window and awkwardly was like, hey, and explained to him that I was thinking of buying that house. He seemed cool about it, but who knows what was really going through his mind. I did ultimately buy the house and he still lives here across the street. Fun times. Mm hmm. Yeah, both of y'all are each other's booty calls, you fucking posers. Number 14. <coughs> Does this story end? Okay, 
Jesus Christ. Oh, man. Oh, why do I do this to myself? I do it for the prelude. <laughs> Long story is that I used to work retail in a shopping center in my hometown, and I was sent to do the post office run one lunchtime and took the route out through the M&S store as it was the quickest way to the P.O. or post office. For the two days prior, I'd done the run and encountered this little old lady, blue rinse, hairnet, and giant handbag that could fit an entire wardrobe in type of lady. Day one, I open the door and hold it for her because I'm a nice person like that. She starts yelling at me that she isn't an invalid, or an invalid as it is sometimes pronounced, and is perfectly capable of opening her own damn door. Day two, I go through the door, she's coming the other way, but at that point it's too awkward or it's at that like too close to let the door go, but too far to actually hold the door without being weird. So given her response the day before, I let it go. She was, after all, perfectly capable of opening her own damn door. She gives me deaf glares and starts muttering about how rude young people get, not respecting their elders and not holding the door and shit now as I walk past. Day three, same route, and I meet her coming in as I'm going out and decides that she's too close to let the door. She'd probably get hit in the face. So I hold it despite the two days beforehand. She isn't even at the door and starts on her perfectly capable rant. So I think, fuck ya, you old bent, and let the door go. And then she starts yelling at me for not holding the door. I'm already late for lunch because we are short staffed and I hadn't had breakfast because the alarm didn't go off because the cat tipped it off the bedside table and managed to turn it off and I've been running about like a dick trying to make sure the shop is running as it should and I'm having a very bad day how to tell this post has been written by a woman woman write my posts now why write long word when few do trick no Damn it. Where does this go? You know? Where does this go? Does somebody else see him telling off this piece of bitch? So I bet the person says, make up your fucking mind about whether you want the bloody door held or not. You yelled at me Tuesday because I did hold it. You yelled at me yesterday because I didn't hold it. Now today you yell at me for holding it so I let it go and you, you need it held. Like, what the fuck? Now you're bitching at me like the crotchety old fuck that you are because I let it go after you yelled at me for trying to be nice. Being old doesn't get you a free pass to, to be a miserable old cow piss off. Most of the people only started paying attention at the being old doesn't get you a free pass stage and just saw me in a black hoodie screaming abuse at an old lady uh, in the street outside of Marks and Spencer's. They all started yelling at me. Um, let this be a lesson. You know, you got some shit to say to an old person because they're being a piece of crap. Keep it short, man. You know, don't let it be. Or you raising your voice and seeming like the crazy person. Don't give people the chance to pull out their phone, tap the, you know, record button and get some footage. Just look them in the face and go, shut up, bitch ass motherfucker. And then walk off. You know what I mean? Keep it short. Short and sweet. Short and sweet. Then it'll be he says, she said. They'll be like, wait, what? He said, he, he called me a bitch ass motherfucker. You'll be like, no, I didn't. Bye. <laughs> That's Kyle's uh, advice. <laughs> Bitch ass motherfucker. Very, very quick. Very easy. Number 13. Mm -hmm. See if we can get through this entry in the next year. My friend Anna was in her 20s, but she looked really young. Easily. As though she could be a minor. Okay. She had too much to drink at a bar, so I started carrying her home on my shoulders as she was having a really hard time walking. As we got to her house, I went to let her down and she fell off and smacked her head on the fence. Damn. She was wearing a skirt and as she fell, it went up to her waist. I'm trying to get her to come too so that she can go in her house when an old lady walks out on her porch and starts screaming, what are you doing to that little girl? Where are her clothes now? I try to calmly explain that this is her house 
and then I'm just a friend trying to get her home. But she just keeps shouting, Where are her clothes now? What have you done? What have you done to her? She was clapping. She won't come to, and I realized that this is a bad situation based on how it looks. So I tell the old lady we can call an ambulance. Mm, you know, You know how pricey that is? Can y'all not? As I tell my friend we are about to call an ambulance, she immediately comes to. She's like, look, yeah, I got that kind of money. <laughs> and fixes her skirt and stands up. The old lady says, oh, you were right. I guess she had clothes the whole time. Well, I guess, I guess she was only trying to help. Number 12. Oh my God, guys. I had recently started dating this girl. We had been together maybe three months, and I had yet to do the meet the parents thing. Okay, I had been putting it off as her dad was this fearsome Scottish dude who was known for his fiery temper. I what a hum. Anyhow, at my 19th birthday party, things got out of control. It was supposed to be a garden party, but it got changed to a garage party when the weather let me down. Sometimes love comes around and it knocks you down. Just get back up when it knocks you down. Or was it rain? It was a slinging. It was slinging it down. Yeah, I guess people say this as it pertains to the weather. It was slinging it down. Bitch, that sounds like something that I would apply to, you know, sexy time. Yeah, I laid that bitch on the bed and I was like slinging it down. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> That's my parents didn't want to mess. Everybody was supposed to take off their shoes when coming in the house for the toilet. As you can imagine, after everyone breaks the piss seal, ugh, a few lads can be bothered with all of that just for piss. Don't you mean can't be bothered? So we are all going through my back gate and using the grass around the corner. This also becomes the outdoor smoking spot, and the combined foot traffic in the rain does not take long to turn this into a quagmire of mud and piss. My girlfriend takes a massive swig of vodka. Mistake. This is not staying down. She dashes outside to vomit. She hurls up everywhere in the mud, then promptly falls over into it. Yeah, classy. Classy. Marry that girl, right? She is so hammered that she rolls over onto her front to stand back up. She now looks like the swamp thing, and she is going downhill fast. She is under strict instructions to be home by midnight, <laughs> and it is now 11 p.m., and she can barely stand. This is a small town with no taxi company and no Uber, huh? What was this, like 50 years ago when all the stories take place? So this was before anything? <laughs> And the one mile walk across town with something, someone in this state is just not happening. As quite a lot of people are staying over, my first gambit was to ring her home and try to get her permission to stay over. Of course it was her dad who answered. The request went down like a, a shit sandwich and was given a very firm no from the dad who when then just hung up and the conversation was over. So, I had to ring back and sheepishly explain that she is too far gone to move under her own power. He will need to come and get her. Fine, he yells and hangs up. It was then that I knew I had really fucked up. She was still in a swamp thing mode and her dad would be here in no time. We had to clean her up. We had already gotten her out of her jumper. With her still throwing up in the toilet, I explained I was going to lend her my jeans and in my drunken brain, this was an awesome plan. Oh my god. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> Come on, man. We just had to wait for her to stop being sick. This didn't happen. The panic is rising. This was more than one person. Um, it was more than a one person job. I then got her best friend to help her out of her jeans. I did not hear the dad arrive as the front door was open <laughs> from other people leaving. He walked straight in. I guess someone d directed him upstairs as he walked into the bathroom just in time to see myself and Lucy peeling the jeans down over his daughter's ass as he was still as she was still being sick in the toilet. Time stopped. 
Had I asked anyone to help, I would probably be dead. It, it was a year before I went around for dinner. Yeah. I think he means had I not asked someone to help. Because that's the thing. If he was just peeling off her pants alone, um, he'd be in trouble. But the fact that he asked somebody to help makes it look like, oh, they're just getting her cleaned up. As opposed to the rape, the hot rape that he was probably uh, looking like he was about to get involved in. You know, wowzers. But again, like how, come on, you know, think about it. Like, why would you call the dad and then be like, yeah, come on over, get your dude. And then, and then, and then be like, now is the time. Now that there is maximum, you know, danger. Only, only now can I achieve true climax. Like what, what would I call you first? <laughs> Number 11, okay. I was volunteering at the pool for my instructor's certification. The girl I was with was very thirsty and asked if, if I wouldn't mind. What the hell was that? It says guitar noodle punished. Oh, he hit it with a 100 cheer. My man, I appreciate the love from the guitar noodle. I was volunteering at a pool for my instructor's certification and the girl that I was with was really thirsty and asked if I wouldn't mind getting her a power aid from the vending machine since she couldn't leave her class. She told me where her wallet was so that I could go get her change and another staff member walked in while I was taking the money from her wallet. I was the most straight-laced, nervous kid on the earth and I explained. She either believed me or checked with the lifeguard later, but either way, the first girl got her power aid and the pool hired me later. So, the second girl knows I'm not a thief. Adorable. Number 10. Mm. Mine's a little different. I was at a corporate function and noticed that the president of the company was trying to clean his glasses with a paper napkin. Being the well-prepared person I am, I always keep a microfiber cloth in my pocket. I wear glasses too, and I also carry around dice because I'm typically my dungeon master at the Dungeons and Dragons meetups that I have every week at my house. Excelsior! <laughs> and I am sorry. I really, I'm sorry to anybody just listening and not reading. I added a lot of that in just now, and I apologize. I'm going to go back. I'm going to read it the way that it was. <laughs> oh, God. Being the well-prepared person I am, <laughs> I always keep a microfiber cloth in my pocket. Okay, look. I wear glasses, too. Oh, I see you're a man of culture. Oh, God. Why is it tickling me so much? I wear glasses, too. Hey, baby. <laughs> and I prefer to actually clean the glasses, not just smudge the oils around, <laughs> but I digress, okay? So I reach into my pocket, right? Wait a minute. Sorry. I reach into my pocket, grab a cloth, and I hand it to him. He responds with a confused, huh? Now at this time, I also have a son who is going through potty training. So I tended to keep spare cloths, usually in my back pocket. Wait, no, in my backpack? Your fanny pack. But also in the pockets of my overcoat. <laughs> Wait a minute. Does he wear a monocle? <laughs> I look over and the president of my company is kind of staring at me. Uh, he's staring at the pair of Jake and Neverland Pirates underwear. Boys size small. You passed him boys underwear. Of course, my immediate response wasn't to laugh. It wasn't to say, oh, those are my kids backup pair. No, my response was to immediately say, those aren't mine, which was one, obvious and two, not guilty sounding at all. Okay. Okay. I guess this was a pretty good entry, I have to admit. If only because I was an idiot the whole time. <laughs> oh, dude. You know what the scariest part is? I bet you there are. I bet you there are dudes that only wipe their glasses with boys' underwear. And now we're all sad again, you see? Thank you for the video, Sile.
I really appreciate them smiley face. Damn Swedish Sammy. I love you. Thank you for that donation. <laughs> it's been so long. I'm kidding. I love you though. And I'll always be here. In the event that you or any anybody needs it. You know? Come here. Wow. Number nine. So back in college, my friend is giving out tours to potential students. Oh yeah. He asked to show my room on a Saturday. I agree and then forget. Now in college, almost all my friends were girls. Nice. I had a serious girlfriend from high school who I stayed with, so it was easy to make friends with girls as they didn't find me threatening. I wish girls didn't find me threatening. <laughs> they all hate me. Except for Prelude. Got him! <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Prelude, you know you're my man. They knew I wouldn't hit on them or anything, so we'd hand out a lot. Hand out, huh? Yeah. I want to get some girlfriends and, and you know, hand out. That's what we're going to call it. You cool with that, Dia? Handing out? What are you typing? What are you doing over there? <laughs> that can't be good for your posture laying on your stomach like that. Bro, this dude was living the life. He goes on to say that he'd even sleep over in, in their dorms. In each other's dorms. Like they'd be in their beds, I'd be on the floor or whatnot. So one night, four of them decide to sleep over at mine. Being a nice guy, I take the floor and let two of them use my bed while two others sleep on the floor. I get up at around 9 a.m. and they're still sleeping. So I get on my computer in the same room. All of a sudden, I hear a key in the door and in walks my tour buddy with four families my two friends in bed wake up and sit up in fear they instinctively pull the covers up so it looks like both are naked meanwhile the other two on the floor are sleeping and i'm on the computer chilling and they're all looking at us in shock and i just go oh i forgot this was today one of the dads laughs and says well it looks like a nice school <laughs> all of the guys on tour look like they're ready to sign up <laughs> to go to the school on the spot i didn't even explain anything they all just looked for a second and then left to view another room. On the way out, another dad stayed behind for a second, looks at me and goes, Nice. <laughs> we all had a great laugh about it. Oh, man. Nice. Guitar Noodle says, I'm a skinny mini prelude. Your girth is impressive. Holy crap. What the fuck? Reminds me of the tenacious D skit rock star sperm for sale. Oh boy. Oh boy. Looks like guitar had to go. Had to go shake that noodle. Wiggle the noodle. Shimmy the Google. Number eight. This happened in high school. Hmm. Or is there anything in this cup? Nothing good. Oh, that's awful. Oh, my God, that's awful. Number eight. This happened in high school. God, that was really awful. This happened in high school. Shortly after I started dating my first boyfriend, at the time, I would often wear a camisole with a built-in bra layered under a v-neck tee. One day I was wearing this outfit, but wanted to go shopping after school for other shirts. So I brought a regular bra with me to try stuff on. After I got out of the store, I for some reason didn't want to put the bra in my bag, so I put it in the armrest compartment between the front seats of my dad's car. And of course, I immediately forgot it was there. The next day my parents were getting ready to go somewhere, they had left the house, but moments later my mom barged back in demanding to know why I was taking off my clothes in the car. I frantically tried to explain the clothes shopping story, but to this day I'm not sure that she bought it. <laughs> Ew, ma'am. Number 7. I worked at a school portrait company, and I retouched thousands of... I work at a school portrait company, and I retouch thousands of images, and sometimes I need to retouch inappropriate things. Mm -hmm. uh, don't we all want to 
not just touch once, but retouch inappropriate things. Well, this high school girl was wearing a see-through shirt and I had to retouch out her nipples. Why? I was in the office by myself as a 20-something year old man when a girl walks in and she sees me zoomed in on this high school girl's see-through shirt. I can explain. I told her I'm not a creep, I'm just retouching her shirt so that you can't see her nipples. It was a very awkward, but since she worked as a photographer, she completely understood once I explained. Why would you need to explain anything if she actually, you know, worked in your field? Women. Number six. Sister came home to her boyfriend and our brother laying his head in his lap. What? Her boyfriend was holding his head in his lap and stroking his head and back. Is this yesterday's list about like the gayest thing straight men have done? She was confused and as soon as she opened her mouth, her boyfriend turned around and said, oh hey, be quiet, he just fell asleep. Apparently my brother got food poisoning and was throwing up constantly. Her boyfriend showed up to return some things that she left at his house. So being him, he helped our brother get some medicine from the store, change and stroked his head on the couch until he fell asleep. It took a while since he was always getting up to throw up. We all laugh about it now. Well, that's kind, you know? You know, if food poisoning dank enough will truly make you feel like you wanna just die, you know? Sometimes like, the, I think the food poisoning that I've gotten has always occurred um, out the backside, though. I think if it came out the out the you know out the front end, I I I you know I'd probably just find a gun, you know, too much. What are you giggling at? Hufflepuff. Who's Hufflepuffin? Hufflepuff says, "Didn't know I'd induce such cringe." Is there a he says hours and hours of your voice. Wait, 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 okay. I never used to notice how much your voice cracks, Kyle. But now that I've heard hours and hours of it, I notice the soft little cracks so often. Lamau, you still a little boy. I tell you that your voice cracks. Oh yeah, it's it's definitely my voice cracking as opposed to me speaking for too many hours at end. You know, I'll crack a whip across your motherfucking bing 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 back. Crap that whip. Bing, bing, bing. I like the idea that it's probably just Prelude and me that are old enough for these references. And Linda's like old enough for the references, but not paying attention. She, she like looks up and goes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then I go, I'm ending the stream. And she goes, you better not. <laughs> Ridiculous. Number five on this, the list of 20. Wait, let me explain moment oh my gosh fourth grade all the kids in my class had figured out that they could get up to sharpen their pencils whenever they wanted you we can do what a way to break up the monotony i suppose several students abused this privilege and i didn't want to be counted among the abusers as mrs spangler had become a vocal about it during an assignment, my pencil was starting to dull to the point that the wood was scratching on the paper. I decided to use my thumbnail to break the wood away and expose the graphite so that I didn't have to sharpen it. As I was doing this, my teacher walked by and exclaimed, You're trying to break your pencil. I didn't have time to establish a defense before she admonished me in front of the class. I still think about it sometimes and I'm 37 years old. I'm 37 years old. It's not what it looks like. Number four. What a chip. <laughs> what a chip on that guy's shoulder. Oh man, back in my early 20s, which was around the mid 2000s time, when jackass was all the craze, I went to a party. A girl there took a big liking to me and kept coming on to me pretty strong. Hey guys, here's a tip from, from your big cock girthy geek girthy boy Kyle. If a girl's coming on to you, the deal has already been sealed, alright? Just go go in for the kill, man. You know, separate yourselves from other people, get close, see what happens. You know what I mean? And I mean like physically close, alright? If she's she's like, ah, then just go for it. You don't need to be like, you like that? 
Well, how about this? Slap it on some toast. Well, damn, Ultra. I appreciate this hardcore, toasty, just steaming toasty subscription, my man. You've subscribed for 11 months, one more month, and you'll have been a year deep into the Kyle cream pie. Banana cream pie. Thank you. You're king among men, Kevin. So look, man, the girl's coming on to me pretty strong, but I was in a relationship and I kept turning her down. I went into the parent's bedroom to take a call when she came into the room and tried to kiss me. I said, no, and she started to undress. Damn, girl, I guess no means yes. <laughs> I didn't mean to rhyme. I told my friend on the other end what was going on, and he just said, well, jump out the window. 20 years old, drunk me, thought this was a great idea, just like CKY or Jackass, so I opened the window and jumped onto the grass below, rolled and walked away unhurt. The next thing I know, there is a dull thud, and semi-naked crazy chick was laying on the ground. She had jumped out after me, hit the earth below, slipped and fallen backwards, hitting her head on the ground. People inside the party heard the noise and came running out of the door uh, to find me standing over a semi-conscious, half-naked girl. Well, damn, she must have been flat-chested as a mother. You know what I'm talking about, Dia? If, if a guy doesn't like the girl, no, dude, flat-chested, dude. I'm talking why? just like B cups. Why? Poor girl. Not, not Dia, pour out your drink for all of the less than you breasted women, okay? Because <sighs> you make it seem like they're beneath me. I didn't say that, you know. They just—they're not gonna have the easy road in life. Like, you know what it's like? It's like being a fat person compared to, um, you know, a big titty person. Wait, no, wait. What? What's my what's my scale? Fat to, to skinny. It's flat to chesty. Yeah. Well, damn, Yuki Riku Ryukage. Mm hmm. Now that's what I'm talking about. As we travel to number three on this list, as a broke college kid, one of my go to meals was a 69 cent chili dog from 7 Eleven. I've never tried one of those, but I can't imagine they're good for you. It was four blocks from my dorm and I had no car, so one winter's night, I bundled up in my heavy coat and gloves and beanie and went to go get my cell one. My cell, you in cell. So I'm heading back holding my foil-wrapped dinner and decided to run to get out of the cold faster. The next thing I know, a cop car screeches to a halt in front of me and I'm ordered to the ground. Hands on the ground! Drop the gun! Drop that foil gun! <laughs> I spent the next couple of minutes explaining to New Jersey Police Department why I'm running out of a convenience store at night in a ski mask, <laughs> waving a shiny metal object. Oh boy. Too long didn't read suspects, suspected assault with a deadly wiener. Well, look, man. I'm suspected of deadly wiener assault every damn day of my life. I gotta hide out from the public, my dude. Ryu Kwage, smoke weed every day, okay? Kevin says he's been super busy, how are the streams? They are what they are, man. You know, I do these for the people. Give them some background in case they don't have that with everybody else. I'm not here for the uh, entertainment. I know most people have people for that, but I just want somebody to not feel like they're alone when they drift off to sleepy town. Mm. No. Momster said, imagine being fat and having small boobs. Dude, but that's like the ultimate, like, you know what I mean? Like the ultimate bad Dungeons and Dragons role, like the ultimate, you know, sad, you know, ooh, ooh, just a bad draw, you know? You wanna like, you wanna like draw, redraw a new, a full hand from the deck. Mulligan, you know, do over. That's rude. 
it's not rude it's messed up there and you know some of those girls with bodies i don't care what they say dia i don't care what they say some girls have bodies where like it doesn't matter how much they how much they work out or diet their their mass isn't going to get any smaller and you know what i've seen girls that are like really chunky in the body and they're like super skinny in the arms you know what i mean have you seen that yes yes dude they can't get any smaller their frame won't allow it so to then have small babes god bless them you know because the world is so critical of what we're what we're capable of uh physically and we can't change that boy that's a dice roll we didn't ask to be born to these creatures <laughs> number two what are you my goodness and about what are we going to talk about this list of of 20 wait let me explain <laughs> number two i was really tall in junior high yep sorry about that one of my best friends at the time was pretty short oh like dia and we had a running what? joke what what uh, the list says one of my best friends was, at the time was really short and they were really tall we had a running joke where he would you no wait we had a running joke where he would use a little kid voice whenever standing next to me because i was so much taller <laughs> So one day we're playing tag around my church building after most people had already left and my buddy runs into the bathroom and locks himself in the stall. But I was taller than the wall of the stall. <laughs> I'm, too, I'm too immature to read shit like that and not laugh. I'm taller than the wall of the stall. <laughs> I'm reading a Dr. Seuss fucking entry. Okay, so I pressed up against it and looked down at him and said in my best creepy voice, you can't hide from me. And he used his little kid voice to say, oh no, somebody please help me. <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course, one of the old church ladies was standing in the doorway behind us watching this whole thing with horror. <laughs> Turns out she was there to clean and caught us at exactly the wrong time. Oh my God. What the hell is this? Oh no! Somebody please help me! Okay, I'll upvote that one. I'll upvote that one. Okay. Okay. Did this bitch just call me Cyan? I am not a color. <laughs> Number one on this list. A female friend of mine who is a police officer was on welfare. No, no, you, you want to finish the, the whole sentence when you read Kyle as opposed to screwing with your beard. All right. well, I'm using a fork right now to to comb my beard. Here, here's a little mermaid of, of golden This is the plastic fork that came with that salad that I didn't use because I have my own fork. Yeah, whoever bought... No, I know who bought the forks. And they've been thanked accordingly. And now I want to thank them again. You don't get to thank who got me the forks again. We we thank them in spirit without, you know, throwing their name out there. Because, you know, most people don't even remember the wish list, okay? And that's the way it should stay. I like to think <laughs> the wish list is there for certain people to go judge. While they sip their wine and go, look at this guy. Oh. <laughs> Stop combing your beard. All right, look. A female friend of mine who was a police officer was on a welfare check and was a bit, no, was bit by the property owner's dog. She was about a mile from the house when she was bitten. And because I am an EMT, she decided to call me to see if I could inspect where she was bitten and advise whether or not she needed to go to a hospital. She shows up in my house and limps into the kitchen, telling me that the dog bit her just below her left butt cheek on the rear of her upper thigh. Why she just sue? <laughs> I was worried that the bite had broken the skin and she would need to get it bandaged and probably get a rabies shot. I told her that I would have to look at it, um, you know, 
to see it and you know see if she needed to go so she takes off her duty belt and pulls her pants down to around her knees to expose the bit area it didn't look too bad but there were two spots where the dog's teeth had broken the skin I told her that I would bandage it up and that she could make the 20 minute drive to the clinic I was about to bandage her leg when my wife walks through the door and there I am with one of our female friends standing in our kitchen in her police officer uniform pants down and she's wearing a thong and I was sitting so basically her ass was in my face and my hands on her upper thigh slash butt we both had the deer in headlight stare as we realized how bad this must have looked to my wife we both we both shouted out in unison it was a dog bite nice <laughs> yeah put an ass in my face and I'm gonna show y'all how a dog bites <laughs> <laughs> Such a stupid guy. All right, guys. Um, sorry about the tardiness of tonight's list. Everybody decide on a time during the morning that I should make this list go live on the channel. So I was thinking about 9 a.m. Something like that. But um, oh boy, I was definitely later tonight than I wanted to be. But that was because today was a long day. A long day. Conor McGregor arrested on robbery and criminal mischief charges in Miami. Well, one would hope that when you're that successful, you wouldn't need to have that kind of stupid fun, you know? So, there's that. Hmm. Yeah, so thank you all for being here. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you viewing even after the fact on YouTube. Um, thank you for all the love. And um, I'll be here as often as you need me to be. Special thanks to my hardcore patrons who are making this shit happen. Got two new patrons today. Look at you guys. Bach. Jordan. Mm -hmm. I love you all to death. Thank you to my Twitch subs. You know, all of which apparently Prelude are making, you know, the, the golden children. Should just put Prelude's name like real big somewhere. Or or like or like just like put it across diagonally, but like with a low opacity. That'd be hilarious. And a special thanks to the OG sponsors from YouTube who uh you know took advantage of a very small window to become that. But people can become it again if they want to. Again, special thanks to people who are donating off stream and going to the wish list and making things happen. I do have Dia now, so anything that comes via the wish list anymore, I'm gonna just start having her open because um because why not, you know? It'll be ridiculous. It will be ridiculous. So, um, take it easy. <laughs>